Hi, welcome back to my life with plants. If you don't know me, my name's Newman, and today we're going to have a look at my cacti collection. So stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. It's been a while. Um, going to do a bit of an update on my cacti. It's nearly 30 degrees, so it's starting to get hot out here and I'm melting. Um, first of all, let's have a look at the Echinopsis here. So I got some, I got an Echinopsis hybrid here that um, has beautiful yellow flowers. I'll put them on the screen here so you can see them. This plant's quite an old one. It's about 12 or 13 years old. It's been divided right here quite a few times it's got a nice big seed pod here because I've been um, hybridizing with other Echinopsis that I have so far so good this year with the ammonium sulfate I've been adding to the water is um, it's made the cacti improve I notice that these spines are much better than normal Got better spines, nicer color too. Over here is a Spachianus, Trichocera Spachianus, common thing. Uh, I put this into the collection because it has, it's not only hardy and grows fast, but it has magnificent flowers. I like to hybridize with it. This is just another one of this one here. So they got a seed pod. Uh, this is a hybrid that can get pretty monstrous, pretty monstrous in size. It can get up to over a meter, over a meter tall, and 50 centimeters um, in the girth. I mean, the circumference of the cactus, so it can be become pretty monstrous. And it has a deep purple flower, and I'll put that on the screen for you too. And there's two more offsets that have come off it. So far it's it's still a small cactus, but it'll get growing. Over here, this one is another Echinopsis hybrid. And you can notice that you see the new spines here. Now this is just my imagination or something, but... The ammonium sulfate is really making the cacti healthier. And this new growth is just, not only the color of the epidermis is better, but the spines are thicker and have more color to them. This has a beautiful salmon pink flower, which I'll show you on the screen too. Over here is one of my three-year-old hybridized seedlings that I've mounted onto another Echinopsis to get it to grow faster. Um, looking forward to seeing what kind of flowers it'll have in the future. Down here are some big old specimens. So you can see by my hand here how big this is. This one has a light pink flower. It has really suppressed spines so they don't come out too far. It's almost spineless. This is a big massive Echinopsis. They can get quite huge. And it has white flowers. This pink one here is offsetting quite a bit. And there's another yellow flowering one, another white one, another yellow, and same here. Have all these plants growing in here. Over here is um, Trichocerus huasha, and I put it in here about a year and a half ago. Here's another one here. Probably needs some more water. These are just some more growing that I have in this trough. Next up, another white flowering one. 
This one was a rescue one because they had a poor root system, but it's come away nicely. Flowered a lot. Uh, next up is a. Uh, well, this one has a name, which is good. A lot of the hybrids don't. Echinopsis morning glory. So that is a, it is a beautiful flower. So it's has a lot of petals. It's almost rosy looking. I got quite a few of those growing along there. Um, some more trichos that have been growing and they're really healthy growing them on to sell them here is another Echinopsis hybrid uh, I'm not sure what kind of flower it'll have and this one was a bonus or a not a bonus it was a smaller Echinopsis that was thrown in with other ones that uh, I bought, so I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of flower that'll have. Alright, next up. Oh, I had to have a little bit of a stop there. The phone got overheated. So, what is the temperature? I'm trying to have a peek down here. 30, 33 going by that thermometer. Okay, back. To the echinopsis and trichos this is one of my other trichos there it's got some buds it's been growing pretty well and one here these are huasha trichoceros huashas you can see all those mammillarias in there mammillaria um, pincushion mammillaria Yeah, something really nice here is this um, Lobiviopsis. There's beautiful red flowers on it. See there. This is its second flowering, so it's a very good hybrid. Got another hybrid down here, right there, and that one. Is striking purple flowers but you know what it's a bit stubborn to flower even though it's growing so healthy in that and yeah, maybe this ammonium sulfate will do the trick and down the bottom here are a whole bunch of seedlings that is a seedling of a uh, Libidia. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. And down there, these are hybrids. So we're making these grunting sounds because these cacti way down here at the bottom of the shelf. It's shaded. So down here we can see these Echinopsis hybrids. They stay down here in the dappled, dappled sunlight. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of flowers I have in the future. Okay, next up. Coriantha elephantidens. Now this one I bought is, is a big plant, just like that. And it was repotted in early spring. I think it's starting to give off some growth now, but it's hard to see with all this wool in there. And three big fruits came out of it. I think it was pollinated um, while it was well, before it was sold in the nursery. There's another trico here. With a nice big fruit. See right there. Because it was pollinated. Next up is this area cactus or noto cactus what I'll see. What I'll see I. And uh, it's nice and healthy in there. It was growing in a in a pretty small pot, so I repotted it. 
Um, there's lovely golden spines. Another, the reason why I repotted it is it had uh, volcanic rock. It had cement added to it. So I thought that was a bit difficult for me to see if it needs water or not. But I tend not to water a lot in summer anyway because I live in the tropics. So the temperatures are very high. Humidity is very high. Today it's about 60%, but every other day <clears throat> it can hit 90. And then you can have the odd day that's complete saturation where it's 99%. And that is super humid. So uh, some of these cacti I tend not to water that much. It'll be every couple of weeks or three weeks. Echinopsis are fine. You can water those. They don't mind the tropical weather one bit. As long as you don't overwater them, they can rot like any other cacti. This is denudatum. Gymnocolissum denudatum. You can see the nice new fresh growth there. Thanks to ammonium sulfate, I think that's helped a lot. This thing was stubborn to get growing again. Um, I'm pretty sure if you have a pH that's around 7, you are not going to get your gymnose to grow. So, it's just a little bit of advice there. I keep my pH about 5.5 and I use ammonium sulfate and you can see the results here all of that crusty skin there was from how it was growing before you can see this lovely fresh green yeah over here is a Echinopsis um, sub, uh, subdenudata it's got three more buds on it. It's nice and healthy. You use this for hybridizing. This is one of my um, Gymnocolisseum seglionis. Uh, it's coming along really well. This thing was a tiny little thing, like that size when I first got it. Um, it had a little fungus on the side, down the bottom of the root. It was like a hole there yeah, where fungus was eating away at it. And I treated it with um, hydrogen peroxide two or three times and it's recovered nicely. Okay, moving along. This is my Mammillaria nasopensis and you can see there that it uh, divides dichotomously which is just a technical word for something that splits in half when it needs to make a new branch or stem. And uh, this is a hardy cactus. I've managed to get it through the cold season, no problem. I love its greenish yellow flowers and the way it grows. This one's unnamed. Um, I didn't put a name tag on it yet. I've forgotten to do it. I just got reminded now. It's a lovely uh, mammillaria. It has a nice big fat taproot. I like its central spines, nice and dark, and there's the radial, radial spines there that are white. Nice one. Most people have this in their collection. Mammillaria marxiana. Always has a lovely display of yellow flowers in late winter, early spring, and it's growing really well there. It's in some pretty good shade. And this is my magnificent Ferrocactus glossicens. I've seen this growing in the neighborhood, so humidity is nothing, nothing uh, that's any different from its natural habitat it can get pretty humid there too just doesn't need to be watered too often just careful with the watering and it'll do well 
I love it for its golden spines and its bluish green body. And I have a smaller one here too that have been growing. Yeah, this is another Gymno Coliseum Saglionis um, that I picked up. It's growing really well. And this is Mammillaria magnumama. And check out how long these spines are. These long twisty spines. And this one's growing really mm. well too. Mm. Very mm. nice. Offsets a lot. Um, it grows at pretty low altitude, so a lot of humidity and heat and like that, that kind of environment. For a cactus, gets quite a bit of water in its natural habitat. But once again, don't overwater; it can rot. I recommend that for your collection. This is um, one of my two Nota Cactus Magnifica, Magnificus. It's nice and plump, and I feel it there. So it's got a good old root system. wasn't doing too well when I first bought it. I only got it for like $20. Uh, it's got a lot of nice offsets on it. It's not the best of... It's not like a nice barrel shape. But you know what? It's healthy and beautiful. It'll, it'll put its shape back. Get its shape back. This is my magnificent specimen. I can put my hand there for the size. You can see the size there. I'll put my hand at the back. This is Saglionis. Um, once again, one thing about this one is that for a Gymno Coliseum, if you overwater it, and you've like literally overwatered it, so it hasn't dried out, and then you've watered it too much after that, they're pretty forgiving and they can actually recover, although you might lose some of the root system. Um, and you might have to treat it with hydrogen peroxide. Um, otherwise, it's better not to overwater it. But when you do, give it a good soaking when you water it and then let it dry out between. Here's a nice shot of my Mammillarias. Mammillaria elongatas. A very cold hardy, down to minus 8 degrees as long as they kept dry. You can see here, these are already flowered. They're quite old plants. I've taken bits off them and grown more. You can see one right there. Right there. That's a recent one I've done. It takes a while for them to root up and get growing. Okay, this is one of my favorites. This is my Noto cactus. Leaning Halsey Eye, and towards the back there, you can see it's got an offset that's grown pretty fast. A new one coming along right at the base there. I think it even has a flower bud. It's quite fuzzy up there. It's been taking the cold quite well actually in winter and in the summer. Super humid, super hot. It likes it. I give it a good old water once every two or three weeks because it's in a very large pot. Right over here is um, Thello Cactus Bicolor. I'll put my hand here for a comparison of size. It's had a lot of buds in that. I keep it on the dry side because I'm afraid of making it rot. So it pushes out buds and I think as this, we get into August those, it'll flower for sure once the sun moves around. That is uh, Mammillaria um, Let's see, Mammillaria albilinata and this one is albilinata too an older specimen. They got repotted. They grow very slow but surely. 
don't force it to grow too much by giving it too much fertilizer and then watering it more thinking you're going to get more growth you're better to let it be more natural in its growing habit these are um, the common Mammillaria prolifera prolifera because it's prolific they have lovely orange or yellow flowers this is my Mammillaria humboldtii variety cispatosa you can see they had a good old flowering in late winter early spring it offsets a lot it's a real nice cactus recommend it this is chrysocanthus Ferrocactus chrysocanthus. This is like the ultimate of ferrocacti. It's got beautiful golden spines against the dark green body. And this one's just going to grow real f nicely. And it's a small barrel cacti compared to other ferros, so it's, you know, it'll never get out of hand with its size. It's beautiful. Thallo cactus McDougley Mc. Magdalii. I've been struggling to like get a name for this just because it looks kind of like a lot of other cacti. This thing is really old. I've had this for 13 years or more. We were up to here looking at fellow cactus Magdalii that I've had for 13 years. Next up is um, Espostoa lanata. And I bought this one as a large plant. It's put on quite a bit of growth. It's beautiful. I just take care of the watering. It's a magnificent specimen. And the cold, no problem. Ferrocactus hematocanthus. I put this one here because it would get caught on my clothes. One time I got caught on the inside of my nose when I was trying to look down on a cactus to get a nice... I was trying to look at some flowers or something and one of these got caught inside my nostril and it broke off in there. That hurt. <laughs> yeah. And this one is also a ferrocactus hematocanthus but it's somehow different I got seed off that and I've been growing seedlings. And then right down the bottom there, right where my finger is, it's starting to offset. And just about every pot of mine has um, Mammillaria, the thimble cactus, growing in there because they seem to like it. There's a big Huge noted cactus, um, horse the eye papyrus. It's got the old offset going down there. It's been growing really well. It's kind of over potted. It'll fill the pot out eventually with offsets, but I really did over pot that. And this one is Mammillaria. Um, Uh, a perbella, and it's starting to divide there, get a new head. It's doing really well this year. Very forgiving cactus. It's actually hard to kill it. It's pretty tough. Mammillaria mystax. It's been growing really well too. And I've had fruits come off it. Each fruit has a about 10 seed in it, and I've produce more babies and grow them on. This is Neoporteria clavata. It's been growing really well. Nice cactus. Mammillaria vetula subspecies gracilis. It has beautiful purpley flowers. And on this bottom shelf we have a big old noted cactus satonus. It has two flower buds that haven't opened yet. This thing is a big size. 
It's 10 centimeters in diameter. Down here is a tonus. I ever watered that last summer. Didn't like it, so I'm going to keep it a little drier. <coughs> Gymnocalicium monvalei or monvalei. And this one has one of the most magnificent flowers of all. It's been growing really well. One of my favorites. I like the spines too. This one is Notocactus horsei that has the orange flower. I picked it up not long ago, repotted it. You can see it's in a nice sandy soil, river sand. Back there is Baldianum, Notocactus Baldianum, and another Baldianum that lost all its root system, which taught me, well, you gotta really let your gymnos dry out in between watering, or they will lose their root system. What do you know? Baruchi. Baruchi eye is about to flower. Very nice. I'll take photos of it when it does open and put them on my Instagram. Baruchi eye is one of the coldest, cold hardiest of Yonoto cacti. Right next to it is this big um, Wigginsia erinacea, native to Uruguay. Grows on grassy outcrops. They're all grassy areas. They look like they get plenty of water, but they grow up on or in between boulders that are in prairies. Very flat, flat grassy areas, and they grow between the boulders, I suppose, because they don't like to get too much water around their roots. But it looks really well watered, the natural habitat. These are one of two of my Gymno Coliseum. I'm starting to fade away because of the heat. I sound like a dying battery. <laughs> These are your um, Gymno Coliseum. Uh, yeah, the name's evading me. I don't know why. I think it's getting too hot now. Ugh. Just remembered now. Mihan, uh, Mihan Richii. Gymnocolisium. Mihan Richii. I'm saying it wrong, but that's the heat. The heat does that to you. Ferrocactus emorii. Why did I buy this? I mean, this thing's going to take up all the space on my shelf. Well, it's very cold hardy. That's for real. It surprised me. Another Gymnocolisium saglionis in this lovely square pot that I bought from a imported shop. Shop that imports from Africa and Mexico. It's growing really well. This, I'm pretty sure, is a uh, rebuccia of some sort. Uh, the other one. What's the other one called? Related to rebuccias. It's not a libivia. It's got a lot of lovely offsets. I bought that cheap from a Daiso shop. I've grown it into this specimen. It even flowered for me too. This is one of my favorite Libivias. And it's lovely small compact clustering Mammillaria. Myrana, Myrana. Arachnioides. I think that's another name. But it has this beautiful bright yellow flowers. That I really love. This is a ferrocactus um, lattice venus. It's growing really well now. In the winter time it shrivels right up. It's not a big fan of the winter but if you let it shrivel it'll get through the winter just fine. Well in my climate it's um, 
very dry, sunny, and can get freezing during the nights. For my climate I'm talking about. That is a piece of uh, Tephra cactus Articulatus Enormous And you can see it has a nice offset growing there I agree that is a cutting Mammillaria glacii It's hard to know if it's growing or not it's Probably gone a little bit dormant now because of the heat. This is um, Notocactus mammalosus. It had finished flowering. It flowered twice. Over here is the Mammillaria grusonii. So it's a gigantic growing Mammillaria. They can get huge over 30 centimeters in diameter. This is one of the only monstros I have. Monstro cylindra puntia. If we go over here, we can get another view of it. So I like this one. Down the bottom here is a uh, little cactus. Um, Claviceps. It's got another name. Grows really well in Japan. Another Noto cactus here. This is the second one of my um, Noto cactus um, magnifica. It's been putting out some new growth there. And I have two. Noto cacti, um, here. I'll put the name on the screen because I just forgot. Don't know why I didn't put a tag in there yet. I was doing it one day and then I, you know what, I just didn't get finished with it. Uh, but they've been growing really well for me. This is my only Lophophora. I got two of them. I'm just giving them a tryout. I them here in Japan. Whether they do good or not, I don't know. The winters are no problem. It's just the summer. We'll see how they go. Definitely don't want to have water in the crown there. They won't do it any good. Okay, that about wraps it up for my um, update on my cacti and my, on my balcony. I'd just like to finish off by showing you my fairy castle here. What do you think of that? I grow this one inside in a sunny window. It's growing really well for me. <clears throat> Sorry if I sounded a bit tired and drained, but um, it's extremely hot out there. <laughs> It was starting to get to me, um, but uh, I was happy that I could show you my cacti and do an update because I haven't done one for so long. And I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I really want to do a tour of uh, all of my four years here, because I've been doing so well this year, and also my orchids. So until next time, don't forget that... Uh, uh, looking after your plants is not a job and it's not a chore it's part of your self care looking after yourself and it'll make you feel better and thanks for watching and see you next time bye